In this ramen recipe deep dive, I'm gonna be attempting a by the book version of Ivan Orkin's Shio Ramen. He's a madman. Hey, ramen scouts. It's rare that I will follow a recipe from beginning to end and even break out the scale to get down to the grams and the milligrams of each recipe component. But that's really what it takes. Shio ramen is a test of a cook's dexterity and agility, and generally I am not considered either of those two. And there's a really fine line between really good ramen and great ramen, so for the sake of yielding the best result for many, many hours of work, I decided to stick to the script. So right here is my very best attempt at Shio ramen, and at its core is a tare. It starts with a sofrito, Tuscan cuisine. Ivan, I am sure, is aware of this. I used the spreadsheet to scale down the recipe as it, was, as it was written in the book. Otherwise, you'd end up with about three to four cups of sofrito, and you really only need about one or two. Uh, I've shared this as a Google Doc, and it will be available as a link in the description below. With everything diced up nicely, you set about to roast the sofrito slowly for over about three or four hours on super low heat. First the onions, then the garlic and ginger. The shio tare is in fact several different kinds of salt in water, and then you add it to that sofrito. It gives a nice round and bold flavor. The dashi in this recipe is something else. It really called for a lot of squid and sardines and four different kinds of shaved skipjack. I didn't have four different kinds of skipjack, so I just used one kind of shaved skipjack and bonito flake. Here I'm wiping off each uh, piece of the kombu kelp and adding it to the pile. Here, the instructions in the book told me to soak this and then after two hours, discard that water. And I wonder if that was an error because I can't help but think that some of that sliminess and some of that flavor that I just developed is lost there. But in any case, you would take the solids and get them to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit and keep them there. Discard the solids and bring the whole thing up to about 176 degrees and then add your shaved skipjack. Um, this dashi is pretty much ready to go at this point. You add it one to one to this simple but very flavorful chicken broth. Ivan has no qualms whatsoever about making a stock that has 16 different components, but his chicken stock is just chickens and water. And honestly, this simplicity yields a wonderful amount of chicken fat, as well as a nice, deep, flavorful broth. These are added one-to-one, -one, the chicken stock and the dashi, to provide depth of flavor in his double soup. Where Ivan may have broken the most with the tradition is using toasted rye flour as one of the flours in his ramen noodles. This, along with cake flour and then high gluten bread flour, make up his toasted rye noodles. Uh, here I'm using some Kansui from Ramen Supply Company. Thanks for that, guys. I really appreciate that. Generally, it's not added to ramen noodles because I think uh, the Japanese people would find that objectionable to find black specks in their ramen noodles. But what it did was create a noodle that had a lot of aromatic qualities and tasted of the toasted rye. Now I know not everybody has a Chinese noodle maker at home, but uh, this recipe is attainable just with a rolling pin or hand crank pasta machine. But I use a combination of the Chinese pasta press as well as a KitchenAid noodle cutter to make up my noodles. Toasted katsuoboshi flakes, the uh, shaved skipjack tuna made one-to-one -one with salt is a wonderful way to add umami and depth of flavor to your dish. 10 grams of katsuoboshi flakes, 10 grams of salt. You put them into a mortar and pestle and grind them down together and it makes this wonderful powdered version of katsuoboshi shaved skipjack that when added to the bowl, definitely lifts it to the next dimension. The pork marinade was another soy sake mirin with a little bit of sugar. And I weigh out these ingredients and add some garlic and ginger to the mix as well. Basically what you do at this point is you add the tare to the pork and cover with water and cook on low for about four hours.
This was a mix of light and dark soy sauce, and I honestly am not gonna go back from this mix. This was so flavorful, and I will use this every single time I cook pork belly, because the final result was just amazing. Ivan's pork belly is generally cooked in slabs. He likes to make rectangular perfect cuts of his pork belly. You can see I add the tare and I add just enough water to cover over and that'll cook slowly for about four hours. Here I chill it and bring it out the next day and there we go, another perfect slab. I do wish I could get a hold of quality bamboo shoots here in the States, but the canned stuff is what I'm gonna have to use. Here I'm making a quick sweet soy dashi. Again, some shaved skipjack and kombu kelp, some mirin, some soy, some sake, a little bit of sugar, and get that to a boil to mix the sugar into the solution. These bamboo shoots will boil for about 10 minutes. Ivan let himself get obsessed with his eggs. He actually specified a six minute and 30 second egg or a six minute and 15 second egg to get that perfectly runny yolk inside. Here I'm using uh, some backyard eggs from my neighborhood and I use the spoon technique to remove the shells. I really like using the spoon technique. I uh, got a little bit of a groove going here and look at all the beautiful egg shells. Love it. Once the eggs are peeled, I put them into the leftover pork marinade uh, that's been cooked. Here I have my amazing Daiso scallion shredder. Apparently what you're supposed to do is just take a whole bunch of them and just rip this thing along. Now we're ready to build our bowl. 10 mils of chicken fat, 10 mils of pork fat. Here you can start to see the obsessive quality of Ivan's ramen. I mean, this is a lot of fat going into some what would be clear shio ramen. The katsuobushi salt adds to the fat and flavors it as well. Your tare also carries with it a good bit of fat, but also those caramelized onions, apples, garlic, and ginger. You've got your double soup, half dashi, half chicken broth. It's gonna provide a lot of depth of flavor. Now you're gonna add your toasted rye noodles, which is just on their own are ar aromatic and sweet. And this is of course followed by that nice, perfect rectangle of perfectly braised pork belly, your marinated bamboo shoots, one perfectly jammy egg marinated in the pork sauce as well, and your shaved scallions. I could not wait to get to just tear into this bowl. It was absolutely phenomenal. The amount of depth of flavor, the fact that I used no MSG and there was just so much umami in this bowl of ramen, it really demonstrated the obsession and the lengths to which Ivan had gone to to make this happen, to make his signature bowl of ramen something really, really special. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out with me, with me for this long. Uh, I'm really trying to build my YouTube presence, so please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.